God has been so good and we just thank you for coming out and, and, and being a part that I can be a part of your life for just a few minutes here. And God is so good. And I mean that sincerely. We got in about, but Kathy, we got in about three o'clock this afternoon. Is that right? And I uh, flew into Las Vegas and I thought, wow, well, God, a lot of things are shut down. I'm going I'm to get to save some money. Kathy won't have to shop. I was wrong. <laughs> she found a Louis Vuitton place, opened it up. Bam. Just hit me hard. Praise God. That's, that's all right. Praise the Lord. I'm glad she enjoyed it. She said, thank you. I said, you're welcome. Praise the Lord. It's just so good and gracious. Now, if you've seen this on television, that's wonderful. But if this is the first time you've ever seen me in person, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet if it's the first time. My God, man, look at this. Where have you been? Thank you. You may be seated. I'm a lot shorter in person. Don't tell nobody. Just keep it to yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so wonderful. If you got your Bibles today, I want you to go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 14. The book of Matthew chapter 14 or your iPads or your phones, whatever you use for your scripture today. And I want to deal with something I believe is going to bless you and minister to the Lord. I've been dealing with this and um, God has been so good and gracious. I was telling Pastor David of course, me and Pastor Mark, we've been, we've been uh, uh, you know, we've been preaching a lot together, victory thons, all kinds of stuff. And you know what Satan meant for bad, God's turned around for good. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you, I have been preaching, well, come January, I'll be preaching 43 years full-time ministry, 45 years total. And this will be the biggest year I've ever had in my ministry, spiritually, physically, and financially. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the most amazing thing. And couldn't go nowhere. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Over 33 million people we've touched that we know of, that we had contact. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. We're not bragging. On, I mean, I, 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 Mark, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I had done anything different, you know, in all these years. But God has been so good and gracious. And, but I've learned something that when everybody thinks everything's going wrong, a lot of good things turn out right. And, you know, while people are focusing on Satan, God is behind doing wonderful, marvelous things. And I'm going to give you the title of this message after I read a little bit of scripture. But I like the old King James Version Bible because it's so poetical. And the reason why I like it, you ever notice when people quote scripture, they normally they may have different translations of all kinds. I believe in that. But they'll normally quote the old King James because it's so poetical. It just flows together. Matthew chapter 14. I want to start reading with verse um, well, let's start reading with verse 22. Before I read it, Jesus has been working all day, preaching all day, feeding people. Fed 5,000 people with a two-piece fish dinner. Think about that. Glory to God. You know what I mean? It's just amazing. You know, and the Bible says in Ephesians 5, verse 1, be you therefore imitators of God as dear children. So if he can do that, why can't we? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Listen to me. You see, when you understand, what the, if you truly believe this word of God, you got to understand something about myself. I'm a textualist. Whatever the text says, that's what I do. And I just that's simple. Whether you understand it or not, you walk in it. I want to start reading with verse 22. Now, he's been there all day, see? And he's fed these people with a two-piece fish dinner. And verse 22, and straightway Jesus constrained the disciples to get into a ship and to go to, before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Now, most of the time, the people that work for the Jesus of Nazareth Evangelistic Association would take care of the crowds. Now, he'd been working all day. He'd been preaching all day, feeding all day. He said, why don't you boys just get in the boat and y'all just go on to the other side and I'll take care of the crowd. Now, you don't see that very often. That's the kind of Jesus we serve. He said, I'll send the multitudes away. Take care of that. Verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Now, you think he'd go home and take a nap. He'd been preaching all day. Do you understand that? Preaching all day long. He, then he sends the multitude away. Now, how long did it take to do that? Now, you think he would go home or get, get some rest, but he goes up on a mountain to pray. Jesus loved to be in the presence of his father. He loved worship, sir. He loved being in God's area or God's houses and things. That, and if you keep reading the next morning, he was at the synagogue. It's amazing how Jesus was a church goer. The Bible said in Luke 4, as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Jesus was a churchgoer. Are you a churchgoer? How many of you people watching online, you should be here today? What are you doing going home? You afraid of the virus you can't see? I'm going to talk about faith you can't see neither, which is bigger than that virus. And the Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourself. Now, I'm going to just get strong with it. Suppose you got sick. And you'd say, oh, Jesus, come help me. Say, you ain't coming to my house. I ain't going to your house. Don't shout me down when I preach you. Look at the pastor. Say it again. Say it again, Jesse. 
Think about that for a minute. He said, forsake not. Now, I'm not talking about being something stupid, doing stupid things, but I'm saying is forsake not the assembling of yourselves. You see what I'm saying? That's God's word because you receive corporate anointing when other people are around you, even six foot apart. Isn't that something? Let me read verse 23 again. When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship, verse 24, was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Would you underline that in your Bible? I'm going to come back to that statement in a minute. For the wind was contrary, or the winds were contrary. Verse 25. And in the fourth watch, underline that. What is the fourth watch? What's the first watch? What's the second watch? What watch are we in today? We're going to come back to that. So underline in the fourth watch right there. Of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Now, you mean to tell me you've been with Jesus all day yesterday, preaching with him, feeding people. You cannot recognize who he is. See, fear will blind you. Fear will totally blind you. Like Brother Coleman says, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Now watch that they've been with him all day. He tells them to get in the boat and go to the other side. And you mean to tell me you can't recognize Jesus? Hmm. Hmm. Watch this. I want to read that again. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is the Spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter, now Peter's always sticking his nose in something. He was the head of the Jesus of Nazareth Evangelistic Association. <laughs> he was. Jesus made him that kind of man. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou. Now that's a devil statement. If it be thou. See, that sounds like Satan in Luke chapter 4. He said, if thou be the son of God. See, because he can't recognize Jesus and neither can Peter. See, you can be in church all your life and not recognize the God that's sitting next to you. God Almighty, if fear is in your life. That's, I mean, think about that. Satan didn't know. In fact, he didn't know until Jesus came out of hell and rose from the dead. He said, if we'd have known, we'd have never crucified him. He didn't know much. Peter, at that time, because he's in fear too. Fear blinds you. So Peter says, if it be thou, now watch this. If it be, let's see where we are. If it be that verse 28, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Look at me. He was walking in fear. You'd think he'd be sinking. Wouldn't you? He's walking in fear. And yet that water is as hard as this platform. Why? Because he's got his eyes on Jesus. Even though he don't know who he is. Ooh, y'all listening. I'm going to show you something here. Watch this. Peter answered, let me verse 29. He said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Now he takes his eyes off of Jesus. And he beginning to sink. Look at the word beginning. He didn't sink. He beginning to sink. You see, I've seen a lot of people walk in fear and actually make it because they kept their eyes on Jesus until they got close enough to figure out who he was. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. But when they took, when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and began to look at the waves and the winds barsing, which means he's stepping over waves. He beginning to sink. Watch this. He cried saying, Lord, save me. Now he calls him Lord. Now he knows him. Lord, save me. And immediately, now immediately is suddenly his twin brother. You guys see that right there. Now let me show you how close Peter is to Jesus. They say Peter's this pulpit and I'm Jesus. He began to sink. He said, Lord, save me. Jesus caught him. This close. How close have you been to God Almighty? And he had to grab you. I want you to hear about this. People worried about stuff they're not, they're not concerned about at all. He beginning to sink, and I'm going to deal with this in just a minute. He beginning to sink. He cried, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, saying unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore did you doubt? My God, man, you're this close, son. Why did you doubt? And when they were come, 
into the ship, the wind ceased. The wind ceased. He was that close. And yet he wasn't sinking. He's beginning to sink. Why? See, Jesus, Jesus quickens your faith and fear that what Jesus quickens your faith. Let me just say it the way I wrote it so you'll understand. Jesus quickens your faith and the winds quicken your fear. See, what are you looking at? What, what's making you alive? And I want to go back to this statement. For the wind, verse 24, was contrary. The title of this message today is impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. When everything's going wrong and everybody don't think hey, we're going to make it. For the winds are contrary, see. But it makes no difference how bad they are if you're keeping your eyes on Jesus, even though you may be in fear, you still walk in water. Until you take your eyes off of him. Jesus quickens your faith and the wind quickens your fear. Impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. 2020 has been a very contrary year. My God, we had seven uh, hurricanes coming into New Orleans, Louisiana. We got rid of six of them. Now, we didn't send them to Florida and we didn't send them to Lake Charles. But, and then one of them, I said, no, 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 you're not getting here. And the Lord said, yeah, and they said, it's going to come over New Orleans. I live right outside of New Orleans. I live in Destrin, which is, I'm, I'm six miles from the airport. And Kathy saw the eye go over New Orleans. The Lord said, it's not what they say, Jesse. That counts as what I say. We saw the eye go over and it didn't touch us. Now, people's houses and roofs are getting blown off and electricity blowed off. Nothing. Why? Kept our eyes on Jesus. Kept our eyes on Jesus. Kept our eyes on Jesus. See, impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. Now, why did Peter get out that boat? But why, why, why Peter? It wasn't his faith, because he didn't know who it was. Adventure. Peter was an adventurous soul. Peter would just jump and do anything just to do it. Write this down if you're taking notes. The spirit of adventure will make you want to live your life on the same basis as Jesus. See, if you're an adventurous Christian, you'll want to live your life on the same basis as Jesus. See, no matter what's happening in life. And you've heard me say this thousands of times. If you've watched my ministry of all these years, I've had many opportunities to fail. I just don't take any. I mean, you know, I mean, many, many, I mean, many times. I mean, shot at three times. They tried to knife me twice. They tried to electrocute me once. I'm still here. They in jail. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because death and life's in the power of my tongue. So and cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, crippling arthritis, COVID, call it what you want. Is what are you saying to yourself when all this stuff is around you? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. But see, Peter's adventure. So let me say it again. The spirit of adventure will make you want to live your life on the same basis as Jesus. I'm kind of like that myself. I just, I'm easy to get out of the boat. Because see, if you stay in the boat, you, you, you only meet disciples. But if you get out on the water, you're going to meet Jesus. He's not in the boat. He likes to walk on the water. He likes doing impossible things. I tell people all the time, believe the unbelievable, receive the impossible, simply because it's doable. It's literally doable. See, and let me tell you something, man. When all this stuff got locked down in March, I had preachers call me, but Jesse, what are we going to do? My God, we can't have nobody in service. How are we going to make it financial? What are you going to do, but Jesse? I said, the same thing I'd do if it, it wasn't locked down. I'm going to occupy till he comes. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to preach. I don't care. If nobody comes, I'll walk the streets. I don't make no difference. I'm just going to do what God says. See, I'm a textualist. It don't make no difference what the world's saying, but it makes all the difference by what God's saying. You see, and I'm not just trying to be a man up here. I'm just saying this is the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Either you believe this or you don't. I was talking to a, a good friend of mine. He said, I don't believe in that rapture. I said, well, stay here. Well, just enjoy yourself. Just, I mean, you want to you go, go. I, I'm going out on the first load. You can stay here. He said, I don't believe that. He said, why do you believe in a rapture? And you know, they want to get homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, and theological. I am Dr. Jesse DePlanis. I got a one, two, I got three degrees as far as that's concerned. Yeah, but that don't mean nothing. You understand? I said, let me tell you why I believe it. Because the last statement Paul was talking, because see, Paul thought he'd be going in the rapture himself. He thought Jesus was coming during his lifetime. You see, a lot of people don't realize, but he did. But he said this word. He said this little sentence, comfort yourself with these words. Talking about Jesus coming again. Comfort yourself with these words. What's the name of the Holy Spirit? The comforter, right? How come you ain't comfort? Why is everybody mad at me because I'm blessed? It ain't my fault. 
It's not my fault. People get mad. He's arrogant and cocky. No, I'm not. I'm just blessed. I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm just comfortable. <laughs> Why? Because he's the comforter. Now, I don't deny what I see, but I deny it's right to affect me because impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. Remember, Jesus quickens your faith and the winds quicken your fear. Do you see what I'm saying here? Now, why is it? Well, when he got close enough, who, when he's beginning to sink, all of a sudden he recognized Lord and Jesus immediately. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to let you sink until your chest. Make sure you, show you learn something. No, he caught him right away because he was just that close. See, Jesus became what we are in order that we might become what he is. See, Jesus became what we are in order that we might become what he is. See, I had a man, he was mad at me a couple, three days ago. He said, you think you own everything? I said, I certainly do. I said, I own your house and you don't even know it. I own your car. I own everything you got. Oh, he was. I said, because you a sinner. I said, the earth God created, when God created the earth, there were no sinners. He created that for us. He created that for his kids. Talk to me. Look at that. Create, there were no sinners. He created this place for each and every one of us. We're God's children. We're not God's adults. And children are born believers until you teach them the doubt. I don't, know much, I, don't know, I don't know much about doubt. In fact, I don't know anything about doubt. See, I was christened and confirmed the Catholic boy. Yes. We, we, we never read the Bible. Catherine never read the Bible until she got saved. We, we just didn't read the Bible because the priest said, don't read the Bible. You go crazy. <laughs> On, I'm, anybody been Catholic? Am I telling the truth? Don't read about it. And you don't talk to God. Who do you think you are talking to God? You talk to the priest. Now, you Protestants have no idea what I'm talking about because you outside protesting. <laughs> See, <laughs> That's what Protestants are. <laughs> Always mad about something. <laughs> the Catholic people, they're just making the sign of the cross. I say, hey, see you later. That's it. We only knew two prayers. The Our Father prayer and the Hail Mary prayer. How many of y'all been Catholic at least once? I bet you you can quote that. Off. I bet you can quote that Mary prayer right now. When's the last time a Protestant taught you how to pray? They ought at least taught us, Mark, Ephesians, to pray that prayer in Ephesians, Right? And they'll get all mad at, at, at the Catholic but because they taught us the Hail Mary prayer. I can still say it. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. <laughs> Am I right? And here's the other one. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be known on earth as it is in heaven. Give this day our daily bread. Why are you talk, saying this so fast? Because you see, that was your penance when you went to confession. How many of you went to confession? Put your hand down. How many of you told the truth? <laughs> One lady. People, I lied like a dog in that confession. Book. Why? Because I'm trying to get out with three Hail Marys and three Our Fathers. And that's how you prayed it. You got your rosy. Am I right, John? Have you been Oh, Hail Mary for the grace of the Lord. Our Father, Lord, and then come to the Lord. Hail Mary for the grace of the Lord. Our Father, Lord, and then Okay, I'm clean. I'm going home. I, I, that's it. I'm over. Am I telling the truth? That's exactly the truth. Possible things happen when the winds are contrary. First time I went to a Protestant church, I freaked out because I thought they thought God was hard of hearing. And people pray loud, monk. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. And mine, instead of saying, you know, almost gloriously heavenly Father God, they just say, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. And he's going, what? What? This must be serious. <laughs> it's okay to laugh. Some of you Baptists, you want to laugh so bad, they can't recognize you. You got your mask on. They don't know who you are. <laughs> Go ahead. It's okay. I thought, man. And the pastor said, go get the deacons. I never heard of those words before. I said, who are the deacons? And the girl I was with, she said, that's the men smoking cigarettes outside the church. That's the deacons. <laughs> that's the truth. That they, that's the truth. That's what they said. I, I didn't think that was wrong. Everybody smoked. I thought God smoked himself. I didn't know. Hmm. You see, Peter got that boat. And he got, out, he got out in fear, but he kept his eyes on Jesus and he was still safe. Write this down. Never overestimate your faith and underestimate the danger. 
So when you walk out in fear, you don't know what you're going to do. Don't know when you're going to do it. See, you're overestimating your faith and you're underestimating the danger because the wind is contrary. Now, if you know in whom you have believed, then say if you, you know, you went past believing, you know, then you're persuaded. Then Romans 4, 17 kicks in for you. You consider not, you stagger not, you're fully persuaded. You're not denying what's happening. You're not denying what's happening in your life, but it doesn't make no difference because you know in whom you have believed and you're persuaded. Because you've committed your life completely to God, 100%. So never overestimate your faith and underestimate the, the danger, see? And that's what Peter did. Thank God that the Lord was there for him. So Jesus became what we are in order that we might become what he is. Now, why did he come in the fourth watch? What is the fourth watch? Well, the first watch was Adam to Noah. The second watch was Noah to Moses. The third watch was Moses to Jesus being born and walking as the son of man. And the fourth watch is Jesus coming back for his body and bride. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the fourth watch. See, he's going out there to save his men that he didn't have time to take the boat. Now, if you go into Bible school and you want to really get really homiletical, the first watch is the law. The second watch is the prophets. The third watch is Jesus becoming the son of God, come, becoming the son of man. And then the fourth watch is Jesus being resurrected, coming back as the son of God. If you want to do it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the fourth watch. Bible said, look up your redemption draweth nigh. You see, not because of the trouble, that we see, but because of the winds that are contrary, you see. And when you understand that when he's going to do this suddenly, suddenly, we which are alive and remain will be caught up. Now, I'm not afraid to die. I'll just cross that bridge here when I get there. But I like to go in the rapture. What for? For the ride's sake. <laughs> I like to try that. Now, the highest I've ever been in an aircraft is 62,000 feet doing Mach 2 in the Concorde. I flew the Concorde six times, flying over. I mean, three hours and 15 minutes from New York, boom, you're in France or you're in London. I love, I almost cried when they decommissioned that thing. My God, that was a plan. I don't know if you've ever flown that thing. That was an amazing aircraft. 62,000, you look out the window and you can see where the blue stopped in the darkness of space. That's amazing to see that. That's why I want to go in a rapture. Because you see, after you get about 20,000 feet, you can't hardly breathe. But I'm gonna have something new called a new body. Oh, you ought to see my new body. It's tall. <laughs> it has no fat on it. It has a six pack, maybe an eight pack, I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna have brown hair. I'll be able to breathe because I won't have blood in my body. I'll have liquid God flowing in my veins. Think about that. Isn't that amazing? So Jesus became what we are in order that we might become what he is. People say, how do you do what you do? Write this down. If anything can be done, if anything can be done, experience and skill will do it. If anything can be done, experience and skill will do it. But if something can't be done, only faith can do it. See, if something can't be done, only faith can get it to happen. Now, if anything can't be done, experience and skill will do it. You know, you just do it. But if something can't be done, I said, impossible, I can't do that. Only faith can get that. See, when those hurricanes were coming, that man walked up to me and said, did you see that wind? I said, no, and neither did you. He said, oh, brother Jesse, man. He said, man, I had 80 mile an hour wind in my backyard. I said, you didn't see it? I said, the wind's invisible. If you think you're going to see faith, that's another thing. You don't ever see faith. Faith is invisible. Now, faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. I said, you didn't see the wind. What you saw was the effects of the wind. Yeah. See, the reason why people don't understand faith, they're trying to see faith, which is invisible. What you ought to do is look at the effects of faith or what is happening. See, faith is, is moving things just like the wind moves them, but you don't see it, but you know it's there. You see what I'm saying? So when you understand if anything can be done, experience and skill can get it done. If something can't be done, and I've been in some areas where it could not be done, only faith could do that. See, and when you understand that, you see, impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. I mean, I'm, I tell you, I've had the best times in my life when everything was going wrong. 
That sounds crazy, but that's the truth. God just showed up and showed out. But having done all the stand, stand. You just have to stand. And he said, let us not be weary. You see, I've had people tell me all the time, well, Jesse, you know, <laughs> well, come January, I've been preaching 43 years full time, 45 years total. I have never had a financial deficit. That's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. I'm standing on a holy uh, platform. I've never had a financial deficit. Now, I was with some of the biggest preachers in the world. If, you, if I mention their names, you know Mark. I, I mean, we were all sitting down, talking, all that kind of stuff. And they said, Jesse, I've been watching you for years. You just don't struggle on money. And I said, no. <laughs> nah. They said, what's the formula, Jesse? What's the formula? I said, if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah, well, I swear to God, we, man, they got their pencils and pads out. I mean, they were, they were interested in this. You know, because when you, got a, when, when you got multi-million dollar bills in television, you better have some faith. Because I don't care how anointed you are. If you don't run your ministry like a business, you, you're awaiting bankruptcy. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching because that came from the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to have to run this place like a business. You got to understand that. Jesus is Jewish. You got to run this thing like a business. They said, tell us, Jess. I said, if I told you, you're not going to be. Yeah, we're going to believe it. And I want to watch everybody. Well, I want y'all to watch my face. I said, okay, I'm going to tell you. Are you ready? They said, yeah. Well, but I said, I didn't believe for it. This is what, my, this is what they, they did. I said, you see that? You were waiting for a farm. Day. No, I didn't believe for it. You know how many people told me? Boy, get ready. They even kind of put a little, like a little Pentecostal, get ready, Lord. <laughs> it's going to be bad. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Lord. They realized that I hadn't been to church. I had no idea what they were talking about. Well, what about the first church? I said, what about it? What about it? Well, Nero killed Lord. He was burning people at stake. Yeah, but you didn't finish the rest of the history. They were singing. What? All them Christians that were died in that Colosseum? But they were singing. You can't sing when you're burning alive through excruciating pain. Mark, that's impossible. They were singing and Nero screamed. Why are they singing? Because they didn't feel no pain whatsoever. They were ushered into the very presence of an almighty God. <laughs> Satan thought he had his best, but he couldn't do it. Oh, and guess what? They're coming back. Can't kill a Christian. They come back. <laughs> I mean, if you've had somebody die of cancer, you love them, they love you, they love the Lord, maybe they die of cancer, they're going to come back. The devil said, didn't we kill that guy in 1978? I'm back. <laughs> like the Terminator, I'll be back. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. They were singing. You can't sing when you're burning alive. You cannot do that. Stephen get, getting hit in the face with rocks. I mean, rocks hurt, boy. Stone it? That's a terrible death. Didn't feel a thing. He's looking at Jesus. Jesus stood up and said, come here, Stephen. And he's coming back. My God, do you understand that? Everyone you ever known or will know, if they die, they're coming back. That's the kind of God we serve. See, Jesus became what we are in order that we might become what he is. Now watch this. Peter said, if that's you, Lord, bid me to come. What did Jesus say? He used one word, Mark. Come. Here's the question I want to ask you. How many words does it take from God for you to obey? How many of them? A paragraph? A term paper? A thesis? <laughs> but what about giving money? There's only one word he says. Give. That's Luke 6, 38. Give. That, word, that's, that, that, that word's for you. Give. All the rest of it is God's. And it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure you meet with all, it shall be measured unto you. That's all for God. He got one word, give. How do you get saved, Brother Jesse? Two words, be saved. Don't complicate this. How do you get healed, Brother Jesse? Two words, be healed. How many words does it take for us to obey? Have you ever opened up your wallet and saw an abundance of lack? <laughs> Have you ever had too much month at the end of your money? My God, <laughs> you're out of money. It's the 28th. You don't get paid to the first. You tell your children, we're fasting. <laughs> no, you're broke. He said, come. One word. Why is that so hard? Believe. One word. 
Say. One word. But there's a mountain. Say. Oh, I love to have that. What things ever you desire. Not him desire, you desire. See, he trusts you more than the church does. Oh, y'all quiet in here. See, because impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. And the fourth watch is here. So how many words from Christ does it take for, your, for me or you to obey? You see, we must be prepared to leave what is comfortable and face the unknown with Christ. You got to be prepared to leave what is comfortable. You know, when I got born again, in fact, let me, let me back up. I was supposed to have a new book out, David. But, you know, the COVID shut it down. We couldn't get it printed, all that kind of stuff. And the title of it is, is, is a wonderful book. I Never Learned to Doubt. I know nothing about doubt. It's, you got, I'm, I'm, I'll send you all a copy when it, when it comes out. I'm telling you, it, it's a, I, know, I don't know nothing about doubt. I knew nothing about tithe. I thought Malachi was Malachi. <laughs> you think I'm kidding you? I got born again. Kathy, am I right? Four months to get me out the music business. I made some money in my life. Oh, Lord, I've been rich. Oh, I've been poor. Rich is better. <laughs> it don't make you happy, but it makes you comfortable while you're miserable. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about the light bill or your clothes and things of that nature. You're just miserable. A lot of people commit suicide and they're filthy rich. So when I got out of the music business, you got to understand, I know this town. I knew the people that built this town way back when, before junk bonds came into it. That's all I'm going to say about that. But anyway, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I worked for those people. I was raised on the streets. You do what you got to do. Somebody mess with you. Where's Fred? <laughs> now, it sounds funny, but it wasn't funny. Oh, no, 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 no. So when I, I, I didn't know nothing because when I gave, when you, <laughs> the Catholic Church made its money on bingo and fairs. Am I telling the truth? Fairs and things like that. We didn't know no, nothing about tithing. Remember that time we were at that, what's the name of that church? Terrible and full gospel temple. Kathy, you know, <laughs> I went to my first service after I got born again. I'm talking about when I got out of the music business and the man said, open your Bibles and turn with me. It's time to receive the morning tithe and offering. I thought he said tires <laughs> because I saw a bus outside, John. I thought, well, maybe the church might need some tires on that bus or something, you know? So I leaned over to Kathy. Am I telling the truth? I said, Kathy, uh, the church needs some tires? She said, no, not tires, tithe. I said, tithe? What do you mean tithe? She said, you give 10% of your income. I said, is that in the Bible? And she, and she turned over to Malachi. I thought it was Malachi. <laughs> and he said, will a man rob God? And you know what I thought? Not in my neighborhood. <laughs> He's going down if he does. <laughs> I'm going to make him an offer. He don't refuse. I'll repent. Hey, I'm here full of grace. The Lord is with thee. <laughs> You're going down, baby. You don't do that. And I remember telling Kathy, well, we'll do that the rest of our lives. Why is it so hard to give God his money? Boy, I did get quiet on me, Martin. <laughs> How, listen, I'm telling you what, you ought to be stronger now because of this COVID than you've ever been in your life. Where's all the people say, I believe the word of God. They're at the house going, I'm scared. Here you got the baby Christian with their pampers on. Come on, man, we're going to church. We're going we to get in there and have some fun with Jesus. Wait a minute. Do, do we believe this? Impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. I said, Kathy, we'll do that the rest of our life. I want, to make, I want to make an announcement. Have you noticed that God has never changed the rate? Well, MasterCard has, huh? Visa. He's never changed the rate. It's the same forever. When you understand what I'm saying, you must be prepared to leave the uncomfortable or leave what is comfortable and face the unknown with Christ. But when you got Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, you got to understand something about us as people. We are so unique in the creation of God. So, oh, some people will get mad at me about that. So far above archangels, cherubims, seraphims, the one with the six wings. They are servants. We are sons and daughters that serve. We're in the family. The name of God Almighty is on Gabriel. 
on Michael, but the name of God Almighty is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's why you family, that's why he said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visited him. You ever heard of God visiting an angel? No, they make appointments to see God, but he'll come and visit you. Why? Because you, oh, I'm preaching better y'all shout, listen to me. Because you made in his image and in his likeness. See, you're a part of who he is. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and mankind. The only time, the only people can sit down, Vicky, in his presence is you. Gabriel got to stand at attention. Michael, but we can sit down like y'all sitting down now. I think I'm going to preach to them for a while. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Do you understand how valuable you are? Oh, how angels go, wow. I wish God would have made me one of them. So it didn't make no difference what the world said. Impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. I mean, I've had people say, if you do this, we'll put you in jail. I said, I'll have a jail ministry. I said, I'll preach so much, you'll throw me out of jail. You won't want me in jail, son. I can talk till you blue in the face. Hmm. Why? I got out the boat of religion. I don't know nothing about doubt. Have you ever saw me sad? Sick? Depressed? Discouraged? Despondent? Not being arrogant. Listen to me. I'm no better than you. I don't have any more faith than anybody in this building, but I might have a little more obedience. That's possible. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know your life. I just decided to obey. I've been married to Kathy for 50 years, John. 50 years. Can you believe it? I look 20 years older than her, but I'm only three years older. I just haven't done some of the things she's done, but I'm gonna get off of that real quick. <laughs> I give her a hard time. She's in the dark. I'm gonna kill you when I get you back at the hotel. Praise the Lord. You see what I'm saying? And you know what? I'm 71 years old. And people say, boy, Jesse, but Jesse, you got more energy. I don't have any more energy, but I might have a little more God. I just enjoy being saved. I enjoy being in his presence. And yet I'm very comfortable with God. And you ready for this? He's very comfortable with me. He said, come, let us reason together. There's been times I tried to change his mind on some people. I ain't gonna lie. I said, Jesus, I know these people. Send them to hell. I'm telling you, they just ain't worth dying for. I'm not going to lie. I've said that. He, he laughed like he said, I can't do that, Jesse. I'll do it for you. <laughs> There's verses in that Bible you don't like. There's some I hate. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I swear to God. I would tear them out. Well, don't look at me weird. The Baptists do it. <laughs> the Episcopals do it. The Catholics do it. And even the Pentecostals do it. <laughs> What is what you don't like? Vengeance is mine. No, let it be mine. You take too long. <laughs> Bless those that curse you. What? What? <laughs> Bless those that curse you. You want to dance with me? <laughs> Can I say something going to shock you? Are you ready? Now, don't judge me until I finish. Jesus had a little gangsta in him. <laughs> Jesus had a little gangsta in him. He really did. They said, we're going to kill you. He said, what you say? We're gonna let me tell you something. Ain't nobody take my life. You want to dance with me? He slapped Saul of Tarsus off that donkey and said, you want some of this? <laughs> Go read the Bible. He didn't play no game. That's kind of gangster, isn't it? Not in a bad way. In other words, we're going to kill you. You ain't nobody taking my, get out of my face. I'm just imitating him. Ephesians 5, 1. See, we got to get serious with this stuff. You know, you're not going to do that. Let me tell you what, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Hmm. Now you're going to have to be strong. And you can. He said, God's telling that to Joshua. You're going to meet a bunch of enemies over there, but be very courageous. You do not fear. You be courageous. You understand? You walk through this thing. I mean, it's example after example after example to be what he said we could be. You see, the path of obedience always has contrary winds. 
Write that down. That'll help you. The path to obedience always has contrary wind. There's always going to be somebody mad. Something, somebody trying to fight you about this and that. You know, this, it, it, but when you know in whom you have believed, you're persuaded, it doesn't make any difference. Because you know the end result before the end result comes. You see, contrary winds. I've had them all my ministry life. You know, what people don't understand, they fear. And what they fear, they attack. I have been attacked ferociously. I've had more sinners like me than Christians. I'm not going to lie. That's a fact. Who do you think you are? How much time you got? Sit down. In the beginning, <laughs> because John, me and you are in every verse in that Bible. That Bible was wrote for us. Lock, stock, and barrel. It is our constitution for life. It's a text that does not require any amendments because it's made perfect. Isn't that amazing? When you understand that, the path of obedience always has contrary winds. I was telling the Covenant Church, which Kathy is the pastor of it. Oh, Lord. You know what? And she can preach the horns off a of billy goat. But do you? No, I want you, that woman can preach. Boy, she's doing good. She told me the other day, quit interrupting me when I'm interrupting you. <laughs> okay, okay. But they don't like it because she's a woman. I'm glad she's a woman because I ain't sleeping with a man. <laughs> now you do what you want to do, Jack. I'm glad she's a woman. <laughs> you say what you want. I said, and you know why you worry about women? That's the Apostle Paul's fault. Because what I love, oh, I'm going to shake him. What I, the Lord told me to say these things. Uh, uh, what I love about the Bible, God records the failures as well as the successes. To make you realize that we all human beings working on our salvation with fear and trembling. God recorded that Abraham lied like a dog. Isaac lied. Moses said, I had enough. I quit. Jeremiah said, I ain't going back. Peter cut a guy's ear off. I'm glad that God recorded the failures. But he also recorded the successes. Let me show you something about the Apostle Paul. Greatest, in, in my personal opinion, greatest in, in intellectual mind ever drawn to the realm of Christianity. That's my personal opinion, which I believe I'm right. Oh, that man had revelation. But watch this. He was different when he was in private settings. He did exactly the same thing Peter did. He, he withstood Peter. Because Peter, when the Jews came to town, the big boys from the church came to town, you know, Peter backed up and kind of, wait, let me go over here. You know, he ain't going to mess with nobody. And Paul withstood him, David, publicly. Nailed him to the wall. And Peter said, he hard to be understood. But hear him. Watch this. Does the exact same thing that Peter does. Because you see when he's in small settings, he told women like Phoebe and Priscilla, he said, y'all do, man, y'all doing a great work, man. My God, take care of the church. Do, I mean, you, man, do, teach them and preach them and do everything. But when he got to the synagogue, he got to the church. He told a woman, cover your head and shut your mouth. And women have had to bore that brunt ever since. He had the power to stop that. But he knew it caused a revolution in the church. Now, when he was in private settings, go read it, study it out. He would say, man, boy, he, well, my, she did this and she, and she, you know, she's the leader of this and that. Oh, she can, you can send her to China and she can handle 3,000, a mission at 3,000 churches, but you can't pass that church in America because she's a woman. Like as if that makes it, you know what, ladies, look, how many of you are women? Hold your hand up. You're not. You ain't a woman. How many of you are men? Hold your hand up. You're not. That means no male, no female, no Jew, no Greek, no bond, no free. He could have stopped that. But he didn't because he knew it would cause a revolution. Because men didn't talk to their wives. Women were made for production. You didn't talk to her. You just, you, when you go into church, you cover your head and you shut your mouth. But when he was in private settings... When they had those little house churches, boy, y'all pass it, teach this pastor. Ladies shout, I'm setting you free right now. Uh, you're going to have to go study that out, but you will find it to be true. He could have stopped that, but he's still human. I'm glad God recorded it. Because at the end of his life, he said, I fought a good fight. And I finished my course. You got to know when you finished. 
and I've kept the faith. You can't take my head away from me. You're going to chop my head off? I got to have a crown on his head. God's going to give me a crown. I got to have a head to wear it. You see what I'm saying? So when you understand that, see Paul in first century Rome, you got to understand something. Paul never thought that slavery could be abolished. Do you know there were only 3,000 Roman citizens and the rest of the people were slaves? Go do some history studying. That's right. There's no way. So he told if he was a slave, be a good slave and go back to the master. Never think that that could be abolished. You see what I'm saying? Same thing with Peter. Same with all of them. See, you got to understand how generational things. God never changes, but people do. And you got to work with all that kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? Don't you understand what I'm saying? Listen to me. He could have stopped it. Now women have to bear the brunt. If they're in leadership, well, she's a woman. Thank God. Because if you notice something, you can ask any boy. You, you can say anything you want by somebody's father. Say, man, I don't like your daddy. I don't like him neither. But you better not say nothing about their mama because they'll beat your brains out. you mess with their mama. There's something about a mama, son. Don't play no game with no mama. She, I mean, she's a mama grizzly. She'll, she'll climb up your hairy chest and beat your brains out, you understand? And she's only 95 pounds and you 400, but she don't care. She's going to take care of them babies. See, people don't know the difference between a strong woman and a hard woman. Why am I getting on this, Lord? This was somebody here. See, you think when you see a strong woman, she's hard. No, she's holding her position. That's her position. It has nothing to do with her gender. See what I'm saying? Listen to me. I'm telling you. I mean, some of these, Mary was the strongest woman I've ever met in Scripture. 15 years old and you pregnant? They kill you in those days. Joseph thought to kill her and Gabriel had to stop him. But she said, I don't care. Let it be even as thou hast said. You talk about strength, partner. So don't criticize her so much. I ain't saying pray to her. I'm just saying don't criticize her so much. That's the mother of the Lord. And Jesus is here and that don't mess with my mama. John, you take care of my mama. <laughs> There's something about, shout ladies, I'm setting you free. Listen to me. See, that's what God said. There's neither Jew nor Greek. No bond, no free. No male, no female. In the Roman world, either you was a citizen or an enemy. In the Greek, you were either intellectual or an idiot. In the Jewish room, you were, if you weren't a Jew, you were a dog. Couldn't think any other way. Oh, but they forgot about grace. And God began to change, not him changing, but changing people. And he looked at women and he said, he created man and said, I can do better. And he created woman. Woman, man, woman, woman, man with womb. I can tell you I'm the head of my ministry, Mark. My name's on every building, on every letter. But they don't say, they ain't nobody pay no attention to me. They go to Kathy. It ain't right, Mark. We need prayer. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, 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 what Pastor Kathy said, <laughs> you know. And then we had all this COVID stuff, Lord. I thought, man, I got to take a break. I've been preaching all these years. I, John, I don't have to go. My Lord. And Kathy said, now you need to preach in the church. I said, there ain't nobody in the church. Yeah, but you, you're so used to preaching with nobody in your front of cameras. I said, but, 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 but I, I thought I could, I could take a break. She said, you know, you're the founder of this ministry. I said, oh, you just figured that out? <laughs> and watch this. I preached a sermon, what's behind the coronavirus? It got 1.12 million views, Mark. YouTube took it off. Too strong, too strong. Oh, gee, gee. He beat Jimmy Kimmel. Who's Jimmy Kimmel? I didn't know who Jimmy Kimmel was. Because he's a talk show, they took the thing off. I will not give disease a high place. I will not do that. You understand what I'm saying? So when you understand that the path of obedience always has contrary winds, and I want you to listen to this. Contrary winds some make some people think they're sinking, like Peter, but they're not. He's beginning, but not. Some are sinking, and they don't even know it. Some are sinking miserably, and yet they won't do anything about it. Let me say it again. Contrary winds make some think that 
One, they're sinking, but they're not. Two, some are sinking and they don't know it. Or three, some are sinking miserably, and yet they won't do anything about it. Let me give you a prime example of this. People that are sinking miserably won't do a thing about it. I'll tell somebody who's sick, I said, by his stripes, you're healed. They look at me like I lost my mind. Well, brother, just I am sick. I said, no, I'm not dealing with your I am sick. I'm dealing with your word healed. If I can get you to look at your word healed like you're looking at your I am sick, I get rid of your I am sick with your word healed. Well, I ain't going to say I'm healed when I am sick. I'm not dealing with your I am sick. I'm dealing with your word healed. If I can get you to look at your word healed, like you're looking at your am sick, I get rid of your am sick with your word healed. In other words, I'm wanting you to look at your answer like you're looking at your problem. That's all I'm doing. If you look at the answer, it will fill your eyes, eyes up so loud and so wide that you won't see the problem. When I, when I heard about Sister Vicky, you know, in that accident, first thing, first thing I thought of, I think, I think it was Trenda, you know, came up, it just happened or something like that. I said, let's pray. Remember, we prayed, we believed in God. And then I saw her today. I said, Lord, she don't, she, she's doing great. And all she said, I'm doing, bless God, I'm ready, I'm ready. Why? She's looking at her answer. Not denying that they had a car accident. I told that to David, man, you got to, you got to get rid of them devil horses and get some saved horses, man. <laughs> No, no, I'm not. <laughs> them horses throwing y'all all over the place. Get a horse like this. <clears throat> Amen. <laughs> Just keep going. I, you know, I love horses. I think I can talk to them. I go to a church called Prevailing Faith every year. And you know, the, the ushers meet me on horseback. It's wonderful. So it's a great place. And I walk, I said, I want to talk to your horse. And he said, and I look at that horse and I go, <clears throat> And that horse go. <laughs> I'm like Jesus talking to John the Baptist when he's in his mama's womb. Jesus in Mary's womb, Johnson, Elizabeth womb, and Jesus said, I'm gonna fill you with the Holy Ghost. And he started kicking Elizabeth. You know, I got ran out of the Ottoman Park Zoo in New Orleans. I like to watch the animal show. Remember that guy? <laughs> People were so mad at me. I love monkeys and gorillas. Oh, Lord. And I watched all them shows, you know. So there was this baboon, and there's a male baboon. He's like, yeah. And there was this female baboon. I look at her, and I went. And she go. All of a sudden, that male baboon. And I look at her, and she's going. He starts throwing, man. And the man said, you're talking to these animals. I said, yes. He said, you got to leave. <laughs> they asked me to leave the zoo. Am I telling the truth? Get out of the zoo. I had one chimpanzee so mad, he was spitting water. Because <laughs> I was looking at his girl. Oh, he, oh Lord. Gee. And she just looked at me and go, hmm. hmm. Well, I watched, I watched the channel and watch how they do all that stuff, you know. <laughs> Am I right, Kathy? I'm not exact. I just have more fun. Well, I watched them horses. I saw that movie, The Horse Whisperer. You ever saw that? You ever, you ever saw that, The Horse Whisperer? Great movie. I do the same thing with God. I watch every movement of him. I'm going to act like that. You're going to get persecuted. I believe in the hundredfold. Jody said that to a person the other day. My daddy believes in the hundredfold to his core. The Bible said with persecution. Oh, I get it. But I don't care because persecution, Percy ain't cute. It don't make no difference. It don't make no difference what they say. I read the end of the book. We win. We win. We've already won. And I know, I'm not believing that, I know that. And when you know. How many of you knew I was coming tonight? Hold your hand up. How'd you know? Couldn't see me. Couldn't hear me. Couldn't touch me. Couldn't smell me. I was not in the room of the five senses, right? But you believe the pastor named David. Right? Now what would you have done 
<laughs> we'd have got in, Pastor David got up and said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Brother Jesse ain't coming. I just want to see how many of y'all going to come out on a Tuesday night in Las Vegas. <laughs> and you got to wear your mask. I had a man ask me this. You know, this is my 21st year here. Did you know that, David? My 21st time I've been in your way. I have people say, I said, why do you have me? They said, brother, we never know what you're going to do. I said, neither do I. See, I come to this meeting myself. I'm excited about God. What what you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? I've had God use some of the funniest things. One time I was, <laughs> Eric, this is funny, man. I'm praying for people and all of a sudden this devil manifests with this woman. <laughs> and you would think God said, go over there and cast the devil out. I heard God say, sick him. <laughs> and I nailed that devil with everything I had. That devil grabbed me, we rolling on the floor, spit flying. <laughs> spit flying, boy. But I got a lot of spit. I didn't care. I've been in meetings where they sacrifice a dog outside. I've had them come in with voodoo dolls. Look just like me. <laughs> it's funny. The devil said, he ain't afraid. I'm not bragging. No, no, no. No. I don't, I don't deal with the devil from the natural. I just nail him in the spirit. I, de- I nail him in the spirit. You see, and when you understand that, now you've got to live like this. And that's more than just going to church on Sunday. Suppose you, suppose you wouldn't have no places to preach, then I'll preach to myself. You know, I went to a meeting one time and no one showed up. The only one showed up was Pastor Mike Lenny. That's true. Because they got the dates mixed up, David. The church was empty, complete. It was just Mike Lenny and me. I said, Mike, sit down in that front pew. You need some preaching, boy. <laughs> I preached to Mike the spit flying. I said, he said, I got a word from God. I said, what is it? He said, let's get out of here and go get something to eat. I said, okay. I said, true story, just walked out the church. Nobody came. It was great. We had a wonderful time. Was you, was you uh, discouraged? No. Yeah, sometimes things, things happen sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So what? Because when you know in whom you have believed, have you ever been overseas and you got an interpreter and when you're preaching, he's saying he's lying? You ever had that happen to you, Mark? I mean, it happened to me, man. Because I don't know what the guy, I'm, I'm assuming that he's saying what I'm saying. And I'm preaching up a storm. This guy's saying, yeah, I don't believe a thing he said. This lady said, that interpreter is lying about you, brother Jesse. I said, you're not saying what I'm saying? And I could feel Tabasco sauce come up my legs. I said, Lord, you believe in healing? I'm going to give you some work. I'm going to slap this fool real quick. They literally come and took him off the platform. Got me another person, a little bitty woman. She said, are you ready, Brother Jesse? And I thought to myself, hmm, I'd misjudged her. She real little, probably 95 pounds soaking wet about this big. So I said, okay. She said, I understand. I'll interpret you. Real sweet. I said, the Lord's going to help you. She goes, and the Lord's going to help you. I said, good God, woman. <laughs> Jesus. I just gave her my Bible. Why don't you just finish this yourself? I'm going to just listen to you. I ain't. <laughs> my God. She was strong, boy. That's a strong woman. She knew her position. Some men think she can't work for a woman. Oh, that's a hard one. No, she's just strong. There's, no, there's neither male nor female. Bound nor free, true nor great. So God's called you to do something, lady, do it. God's called you to do something, mister, do it. God called some of your kids to do something, do it. Just do it. I never thought that my wife would be my pastor. That's a, that's a trip, like we say in the 70s. You know? I've had the Lord rebuke me in front of 5,000 people. 
give me a word of knowledge about me to Kathy. Am I telling the truth? Bishop, keep butlers. I said, Kathy, the Lord said this, that Jesse's a fool <laughs> and he's stubborn and a mule, but I'm going to change his mind because what you're saying is right. I said it. It wasn't me. It was the Holy Ghost speaking through me. And I thought, thanks a lot, God, in front of everybody right here, you know. But the Lord was right. The Lord was right. I didn't think, Kathy, when she said, God's called me to preach. See, I judged her because of testimonies. And I'll close with this. What do you mean, testimony? Kathy always wanted to give a testimony, and it would drive me nuts. Because, you know, you ever hear these old, like go to these older church, anybody got a good testimony? Somebody jump up and say, brother, brother, so-and-so, the Lord, the devil been beating my brains out. I said, Kathy, that ain't a good testimony. I don't know why they're talking about the devil. <laughs> and then right at the end, but the Lord was faithful. But Kathy, she'd jump up. I have a testimony. I thought, oh, God. And they said, well, Sister Kathy, what has the Lord done? She'd say this. I want to think the Lord did it. It just busts out. God. I want to think the Lord did it. And people look at me like this. I said, she can't speak two words without crying. And you're going to preach? Boy, she got past that. I was playing the piano one time, just as I am. Kathy fell on the floor. I didn't like that. Boom, boom. I had to be, get up. Get up. Woman, you done lost your ever-loving mind. Get up. I bet you none of y'all looking at me right now. When I'm talking about Kathy, y'all looking at her. You know, me and Mark Hankins, we kind of started out together way back when we were, I'm older than Mark, but I mean, I, I, but he was raised up in trade, but he went to jail a lot. You know, but it, you know, yeah, I mean, he was there, but he wasn't sanctified. Let me just say that. At least I knew I was going to hell. Mark Hankins didn't know he was going to hell. You know, he just, you know, I guess I don't know. I mean, when Dick has got to come get you out of jail, something rough. But you know. See, they didn't come get us out of jail. Leave him in there, man. We started out together. And I, I can recognize Mark Hankins anywhere without seeing him with this, just this simple statement. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> ha, ha. I heard Brother, hey, Brother Copeland that day was talking to ha, ha, ha. I said, he stole that from Mark Hankins. <laughs> and I found out Mark Hankins stole that from Kenneth Hagin. <laughs> We're a bunch of thieves. I'm just stealing stuff. Good Lord. <laughs> Kathy got up and started preaching the other day. I said, that's my message. She stole my message. And didn't give me no credit for it. <laughs> then she said something real nice that one time. She said, Jesse gives me no credit, but he gives me a lot of cash. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Praise God. It was a blessing. See, when you understand that impossible things happen when the winds are contrary. So what are you going through? Let me give you a word. Go through it. Having done all the stand, stand. You know, how many of y'all seen the victory thon that we did? And Pastor Mark was on it. We had a wonderful time. You know, I, I got a lot of criticism on that, Mark, because the Lord spoke me to do that. And the, Brother, kind of cold, was never done that before in his life. But I heard the voice of the Lord. Wasn't that I was going to do a telethon, I was going to do a victory thon. What that means is I was making people, I was get, making them aware and giving them an opportunity. I don't tell them what to give. I'm just saying I, I make it aware. Because what people don't understand, there's 31 broadcasters on the Victor Channel. None of us pay for it. Am I correct, Mark? Yeah. It's free. You know, and he said this. So I, I'm on the board of directors of Kennecope Ministry. I wouldn't I never divulge any of their business. But he said that he said they was on the Victor. That seed is 17 million dollars a year. You know any other ministry doing that kind of stuff? I don't know of any other. And I've been on all of them. What a blessing. And he came up to me with tears in his eyes. He said, Jesse, now I've been preaching with him 30, going on 31 years now. I didn't know what he was going to say. You got to be instant in season, out of season with Brother Copeland. He didn't know what, no. He said, Jesse, come here. He said, you know, when you told me what the Lord said, I know you hear the voice of God. He said, you made me see something I never seen before. He said, I always saw myself as a broadcaster. He said, you know, you're a broadcaster and I'm a broadcaster. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell you. He said, but you made me see myself as a network. 
a legacy, a network. I said, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that thing has exploded. Because it's supposed to. Why? Because we're in the fourth watch.